Did you have it upside down? Yeah. What? Looks like you pulled the Diego. Oh, pulling that Diego is. The side. You know, yes, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. To make something on top of the yeah, we could make it broader. It could just mean a calculation error. It doesn't have to mean an uh, angle error. Okay. <laughs> I like saying in general. Ah, no, that's too harsh <laughs> now, Zach. Now, come on. Be reasonable. Come on. Right. Can we see? Yeah, guys? Guys, come on. Can we write this out? Diego, will you stop bullying Sack now? Come on. He's threatening violence. Try it. No, it's you that you don't understand. It's typical in Spain. Yeah. Right. Have you got that? Newton's law. He's back. Which one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not done yet. Uh, okay, so obviously this has not nothing to do with the original tree. This is something else. Uh, okay, so first things first. As you know, the Earth pulls other masses to it, and the Sun pulls the planets, so just the Earth towards it. You know this. Obviously, you've known this since like elementary school there must be some field like an electric field or a magnetic field you know so for example if I had my magnet north south and I had another oh here we go I could have like two magnets like north and north and south so there's south there's north what happens attract, attract okay uh, the same if I had an electric field and an electron the, the same thing okay yeah, positive electric um, field attracted to the positive plate. Okay, so there must be something like this happening with the Earth. Gravitational. Yeah, this gives us the idea of a gravitational field, which I can draw like this. So, it's a pretty simple field, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, you're in this field, and which way does the force act? Towards, Towards the center. And uh, what are these circles, do you think? Do you remember what these are? Ah, yeah, where are they called? The thing, the thing we did. What's it called? No, no, that was with the magnetic field. Something, something, something. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. No, the Earth's not a... Well, actually, it is a magnet, but not in this context. Equipotential. Equipotential lines. You remember those guys? So these are the lines where the potential energy is the same. Okay. Now, notice that the field points towards the center of the Earth. Again, you know this from elementary school. Uh, is it possible that the field could point outwards? No. No. So this is one difference. You know, when you have a proton, the field points out. And when you have an electron, the field points mm -hmm. in. This is not the case with gravitational fields. They only point in. In fact, what would happen if the field was pointing out? Explode. No, no, what would happen to you personally? You'd start falling upwards. Yeah. Falling upwards, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what happens with the astronauts in the International Space Station. Because they, they are in a constant gravity. fall, but at the same time... Yeah, but they're not falling upwards. They're still falling downwards. Okay. Yeah, you're, okay. this here you, this is this is um, you know you you fall off your chair and you start to rise upwards. Okay, <laughs> that's what this is. Um, so that doesn't exist. That doesn't exist for gravitational fields, and that actually makes them quite different to magnetic fields, which can go you know attract or repel, and electric fields, which can attract or repel. This is unfortunate. This is unfortunate because. This no no this prevents us from making hoverboards and hover cars, right? Unfortunate in the sense that they allow life. No no no, no but, but I mean it's unfortunate that it's not possible to flip it around. Oh, yeah. 
You know, Absolutely. you can you can have magnets that repel, but it'd be you, you've you've seen the future so movies. Just wait like for Elon Musk, then you can get a hoverboard. No, oh, yes, yes. Isn't gravity a lot weaker on Mars? Yeah, but still, it wouldn't hover. It would just fall slowly. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, but that's uh, not, it's not quite the same. It's not quite as, anyways. Um, <laughs> so what I'd like you to do is to draw this picture and write the name down: gravitational field. Bigger, yeah, but I don't know how much bigger. Because Jupiter is like how many Earths can fit in Jupiter? Yeah, that's a good it's question. Massive. But you the, but shrink into your own ankles if you. But the other thing is the the radius is bigger too, so it it, it might more matter about what the density is yeah. too, and I don't think Jupiter Jupiter actually is very it's a low density compared to Earth. Uh, Ju Jupiter just in overall mass, it's so huge. Still big, yeah. huge. Yeah, no, no. I don't know. You know, yeah, you know. For Earth, the further away you are, the less the g is. Yeah, yeah. So the density, the radius, does matter. Okay, continue. Continue. You drew that. Yeah. So, it was discovered by Newton that mass attracts other mass. Now we take this for granted. We all know this nowadays. And the bigger the mass, the more force. And the closer the mass, the closer the masses are, more force, bigger the force, yeah. And uh, the formula looks a little familiar, doesn't it? What does it look a little bit like? V equals K Q Q what? Yeah, it's what's that one called? I have to forget his name. Uh, his name, his name's not electric field. I call this baby electric field. <laughs> what's his name? Coulomb. Coulomb. It's like Coulombs, isn't it? But what's the differences? Instead of a K, there's a G. Instead of the Qs, there's Mass. masses. But the R squared's still the same. Uh, do you remember what? Remember we said that these types of laws are common in physics. They're called inverse, inverse. square laws. Yeah, inversely squared, proportional. Um, the F is the forces between the masses. The M1 and the M2 are obviously the masses. And they're separated distance or between the centers. G is a constant and its value is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Now, recall I asked you to note how big the value of K is, right? Uh, compare that to the value of G. Tiny. Yeah. In fact, we describe gravity as being a, the weakest force in nature. Weakest? Yep. yep. Let me demonstrate, Diego. Observe. I am lifting this coffee cup up. The entire Earth, not just the piece that's under me, the entire globe is pulling down on this and yet I am stronger than it okay so uh, yeah only because the earth is ridiculously massive but uh, on a scale you know like if I had one kilogram and one kilogram separated a distance of one meter how much force is that no 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 look at the formula one kilogram and one kilogram separated by one meter. Yeah, it's, tiny. It's, it's ridiculous. It's non-existent. You know, it's 10 to the minus 11 newtons. Just, just microscopic. Less than microscopic. Microscopic is minus 6. Nanoscopic. What's often now? Oh, 
Pete called, isn't it? I think so. I think I asked you some last time. Yeah, I think so too. Which reminds me, I'm not wearing them today, but on the weekend I got Pikachu socks. I'll have to wear them sometime. I got Pikachu socks. I got a Pikachu. I got a pack of four. I got a Pikachu, a Venusaur, Charizard, and a Blastoise. Classic. Classic Gen 1 Pokemon. Say no more. All right. Now, I was talking to Zach, I think, about this last time. That constant G is 6.67, but it's, it might not be exactly 6.67. Its value is not, it's difficult to measure in an experiment. How did they come up with that? I'd have to check. I'd have to check. Um, was it Newton who came up with it? Or was it because in different parts of the world it's going to be different? It would have been would have been Newton, but I have a feeling Newton would have used Kepler's data, perhaps. Mm. I'm not sure. It's just difficult to measure, because it's hard to design an experiment that would accurately measure G, because you're talking about something that's to do with the universe, you know, on a, on a big scale. Um, I think th I think you just have to collect astronomical data. Mm. Uh, okay, can I continue? Which things are yes, yeah, yeah, just you have to infer it. Okay. Notice how similar this is to Coulomb's law. What we've not said yet is what the field strength is. Now remember we said the field strength E in an electric field was force per unit charge. Remember that? Mm -hmm. So what's the formula for the field strength? Uh, it's, uh, in this case it was F over Q. Q. Now this could give you a, a clue for how we measure the field strength in a gravitational field. It wouldn't be force per charge, but yeah, force per kilogram. Yeah. So, what would be a formula then for the strength of a gravitational field? Gravitational field force F over F over m. F over m. Yeah. The letter we use for that, well, we use actually a little g for that. It's the gravitational force per unit mass. Uh, and it's F over M. And what would be the units? Kilogram. Newtons per kilogram. Newtons per kilogram. Mm -hmm. okay. G is not acceleration due to G. Why do they have the same letter? It will become clear in a moment. Uh, in a moment, I'll pull a curtain back and, uh, and, and something wondrous will be revealed. Okay. Uh, so for the moment, we'll just say it's uh, Newtons per kilogram. Now, oh, guys, so just, sorry, just to say, quite often what you do, quite often you have this situation where you have a big mass and then a small mass like this, okay? So usually we write the formula like this, F equals G, big mass, small mass over or squared, okay? So when I write a small M like this, I mean like a small M on top of a, a big M, okay? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, we have a formula for F, don't we? Yeah. It's G M M over R squared. But you notice the little m's cancel. So we can actually rewrite the formula like this. G M big M over R squared. Because the little m cancelled the little m on the top. So you can use either of these. For what? For this? Yeah. Oh no, it's still newtons per kilogram because it still is the same as this guy. So it has to be the same units. take out Google and just Google mass of earth and Dorian could you uh, Google radius of earth 
Uh, I think it's about 6,000 kilometers, isn't it, the radius of the Earth? 6,371 kilometers. Oh, okay, that's a little, that's a little short. Uh, right, let us calculate th the following situation. One sec, sorry, I'll, I'll just draw a picture, okay? Oh, go ahead, what is it, Lynn? 5.972 times 10 of 1024. 10.24 kilograms, okay. And sorry, what did you say, Dorian? 6.371. Six, six, three, three, seven, one. Seven, one times 10 to the 3 mm. meters, okay? And here we are here. There's me, and we're on top of the earth, not to scale. Um, and we're on top of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, uh, it reminds me of, sorry, the episode of Rick and Morty when they're on the tiny planet. Do you remember oh, yes. that? <laughs> yeah. With the sun, that's yeah, that's it, yeah. Um, so let's calculate the gravitational field strength. Now, what's nice about this formula is you can use um, your mass, if you know your force, or you can use the mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth. So let's calculate it. G equals G m over r squared, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 5.97 times 10 to the 24 over 6371000 oh, 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 squared equals nice What you got? What you got? Let me just do my uh, Deadpool shock expression. <laughs> uh, where have we seen 9.81 before? Oh, yeah, it seems a bit familiar, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. It's a bit familiar. Is that not like one? <laughs> well, let's just actually examine this in a bit more detail. Let's have a look at the other formula. What was the other formula? G equals F over M. Yeah? But you understand that the force here is the same as your weight, isn't it? Isn't it? Uh -huh. And what's the formula for weight? Mm -hmm. So the mass transfer. Now they're the same for a reason. In fact, the G is not only a field strength but it's also the acceleration. But again, this shouldn't be shocking because what did Newton say another formula for F was? MA. MA over M. So everything is linking together now. Yeah? This should not be a surprise. 9.81 was the only answer it could have been. They're pretty nice, yeah. Okay, can you write that down? This is a nice little example. Now, do you realize one consequence is that if you were up higher and increased the radius, what would happen to the value of G? Decrease. Decrease, yeah. Actually, 9.81 Um, the, the Earth isn't a perfect sphere. Yeah, it's a potato shape. Uh, well, it's a potato shape. Not really. It's, 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 yeah, it's this shape, man. Come on, everybody knows that. <laughs> um, it's, it's a little bulged out at the equator. So I would think the G is probably strongest at the poles, north and south. Yeah. Yeah, and weakest at the equator. equator. So then, at the top of Mount Everest? A little lower. lower. Yeah, yeah. Would you feel it or? You might be able to measure it with a pendulum experiment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, pilots that travel at really high altitude, you know, like the, the stealth bombers, uh, they might, you could notice it perhaps at this altitude. Yeah, because I have seen videos of pilots like dropping a ball 
when they're at high altitude and then when they're at ground level and they put the video side by side and you can see the ball falling slower, visibly slower than the, uh, the ground level one. So, you know, you could, could measure it. You could see it, yeah. All right, continue. You got that? Yeah. Now, we've already done this uh, and we get 9.81. So, just to recap, all masses produce a gravitational field. Now, that's actually quite interesting, too. Even something small like this has a gravitational field towards it. The force is given by this formula. Fields always point towards the center of the mass. The field around a small mass can be ignored. So although this has a field, we can ignore it because it's so small. Because masses are positive, the fields never point out but only in. The strength of the field is given by this formula and this is in fact the acceleration due to gravity. The value of g is roughly 9.81 newtons per kilogram. We know all this. Now, when one mass is trapped in orbit by another mass, what is its potential energy? Positive, negative or zero? Trapped, so it's negative. Negative, negative potential energy. Um, this is the formula for potential energy. And again, it looks familiar, doesn't it? Uh, didn't, didn't, it's, the only difference here is, again, no square. And this time there's no confusion over the signs whatsoever. Because the m's can only be positive, right? The minus makes it a negative for sure. And because it's trapped, its potential energy has to be negative. Now, uh, once you have that, I need to connect this to something else. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So there would be actually the electrostatic potential energy and the potential energy due to gravity. Which is negligible. Which is so tiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it would still be. It would be, it would be. I think you it's not meaningful to consider it until you get to at least large molecules. Even then, I, I don't think it is reasonable. Uh, can I continue? Yeah. Now, we have a small problem though. This formula conflicts with a formula I've given you in mechanics. Uh, what is the potential energy formula we have from mechanics? MGH. Is this the same as MGH? No. So this assumes the distance between. Well, I mean, we got a small problem though, because how is it that these two formulas are related? They can't both be. The same. They're not both the same, obviously. You can see they're different formulas, you know. In fact, one is positive and one is negative. Okay, so we'll just, we'll have to connect the two now, which is what I'm going to do. So let's be super clear about this, okay? Here is a small mass on the surface of the Earth. Is energy um, positive or negative here? Well, technically, uh, technically negative because it's trapped. It's just trapped on the surface. Now, if I increase it a height h, here its energy is it still? No, it's still negative. Again, it's still trapped if it's in an in an orbit here. Yeah, but well, this is the thing. Uh, what we've done is we've we've um, we've given it energy. We've not, given not, not enough so that it can not enough to free it. Okay. As you said it will fall back to Earth. So if it was at minus ten, now it's at minus nine. Okay. Yeah, exactly, exactly. If this was at minus ten joules, then here it's at minus nine. So which has the more energy? The top or the bottom? Top. The top. So what I'm thinking is the energy at the higher level minus the energy at the lower level. Let's see what we get for this. Now, this should be positive or negative? It should be positive, shouldn't it? No. I said that the. Yeah, it should be positive, yeah. 
the, the bigger number minus the smaller number. Yeah, let's see what we get. So according to the formula, this is minus g m uh, or plus h over or. Yes? I'm using the formula, I'm using this formula. Did I get that in? Oh, sorry, I lost my... Oh, what? Oh, my goodness, sorry, I'm being a bit stupid right now, I'm hungry. R capital R. I'm just using capital R for the radius. GMM over R, pl uh, R plus H, the higher level. R plus H. Then minus minus is plus GMM over R. Okay, let's clean this up a little bit. Uh, what's in common? Mm -hmm. What can we factor out? G, M, M. Anything else? No. That's all, isn't it? And then that will be 1 over R minus 1 over R plus H. Okay, fine. Now, let me just scoot over here. G, M, M. What I'll do now is I'll take R out of the first one. So that's, that's 1 over R times 1. Obviously, that's the same as that, isn't it? Minus 1 over R times 1 over 1 plus H over R. Are you happy with that? I've taken R out of this. Think about it. If I multiply the R back in, what do I get? R plus H. So what can I take out now? Yeah, G, M, M, sorry, over R. And this is 1 minus 1 over 1 plus H over R, which equals G, M, M over R, 1 plus 1 over, sorry, I need the minus, I'm sorry, 1 minus 1 over 1 minus minus, H over R. I just changed this plus here to minus minus. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll let X equal minus H over R. So then this becomes G M M. No, I got a better letter. I'll let small R equals minus H over big R. So then this becomes G M M over R, 1 minus 1 over 1 minus R. Now, this here, sorry, I keep switching my M's. Um, does this look familiar? 1 over 1 minus R. Where have you seen that in maths class before? Geometric series. Geometric series, Geometric series for what? Infinite. Infinite. So you can replace this with 1 minus bracket 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed and so on. I'm just using the, the geometric formula here. Now, is this r big or small, this small r? Look at what it is. Yeah, think about this. If this h is 1 meter and this r is 6,000 kilometers, then this would be absolutely tiny wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. So then if R is tiny, what about R squared? Even smaller. Yeah, so much so that we can probably safely ignore the rest of that series. So that will be GMM over R. 1 minus 1 cancels and you're left with just R. Yeah? Okay, but what did we say R was? Oh sorry, that's minus R, isn't it? Yeah. What did we say R was? Minus H over R, didn't we? So that's G M M H over R, which R equals, R. huh? No. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, that's it. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, or or like that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, zoom out one more level. Can you still see? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this would be small M. G M uh, over oh yeah and also wait hang on why is it, uh, sorry what is this 
Yeah, sorry, sorry. That's 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 R squared, isn't it? Or R, yeah, sorry. It's big R. Yeah, yeah R squared, yeah. GM over R squared H. Now what is GM over R squared? Which letter? Same. No. MGH. No, no, but it's a standard first year physics proof in university. You'll see it again if you do any kind of physics next year. Okay. Uh, so, these formulas are not so different after all. That MGH is an approximation for the difference in the energy level between two trapped states. That's what it is. So when we say the potential energy here, uh, Diego, like here to here is one joule, what we're really saying is the difference between this level and this level is one joule. Like if this was minus 10 and this is minus 9, then there's a difference of 1. You like it. I know you like it. Write it down. You like it so much. Yes, Zach? Amazing. It is, actually, I think. Okay, you got that? No? Wait, well, where does the negative go to again? Or does it just... Which negative? Wait, negative. Like one minus one. Oh, no. Sorry. For the geometric series, it starts on one. Yeah. One plus R. Yeah. This is a geometric series with A equals one. Because the formula is actually A over 1 minus R.
It's like that internet meme, you know? It's all coming together now. All right, you got that? Yeah? yeah. So. Uh, are you all out? Yeah. Just give her some paper too. <laughs> it's there you go. Okay. Newton's law of gravity gives the size of the forces between two masses. This force is one of the four forces of nature. It's an example of an inverse square law. Please note the small value of g. We talked about this already. Right, here's a quick calculation for you uh, using your calculator. What is the force between the Earth and the Moon? There's the mass, there's the mass, and there's the distance. So tell me what the force is between the two. What? But you know the distance between the Moon and the Earth? The distance between centers. It's a hundred times smaller than Earth. So, you know, if your mass was a hundred times smaller, that'd be concerning, wouldn't it? It's in theory. If you start taking the Earth and taking it away, <laughs> it would reduce the Earth. Yeah, true, true. There is a lot. Yeah, but we haven't really we haven't really taken much away, you know. Well, satellites and satellites. Well, really, yeah. sta satellites actually still contribute to the gravitational pull, I think. Really? Yeah, it's still a mass in the orbit of the Earth. But it's not. I don't think that matters too much. It doesn't matter what the mass is doing, you know. Yes. No. Okay. You got an answer? Yeah. It's pretty big? Mm. What about you? 1.97 times 10 to the power of 20. Nice. Right. How long does it take the moon to orbit the Earth? Same info. Now, do you know what type of problem this is? Yeah. There we go. All right, off you go. T equals. Yep. Two yep. Pi. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Omega equals. That's the sound of people checking their notes. How long does it take the moon to orbit the Earth? But Zach, 
Newton gave us a way to get A if we know the F. A equals omega squared y? I think so. Mm -hmm. F over mu. Mm -hmm. F over m. So look, you've got T equals 2 pi mm -hmm. over omega, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but what does omega equal? Uh, A over R. Well, you could say omega... V equals omega R. I know that one. Yeah. Yeah. So omega is V over R. Right? You also have the formula that A equals V squared over R, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Now, if you, if you multiply by M, then what you get here is F equals MV squared over R. Now, this is good. Uh, because um, you can then say V equals root F or over M. So that's 2 pi or. We know 2, we know pi, and the or is the distance we know. Root the mass of the moon, which we know. The force between the earth and the moon, which we know. And the radius, the distance between them, which we know. No, no, no. So, give me the time. Yeah? Come on, Diego, you have the numbers, type them in. I don't have them in my calculator. Yeah. What do you mean? You don't have your calculator. Oh, Diego. Second Diego of the day. Many seconds, huh? The, the. Be careful with your ore kilometers, you know. Did you get many seconds? Here, here, here. Seconds? Second. Divide that by 60 to make it minutes. Now divide it by 60 to make it hours. Now divide it by 24 to make it days. 27.5. A month. This ends up being 27.5 days. days. One month. Yeah, one, one lunar month roughly. Yes, they're not in sync, solar. Yeah, this is, this result shouldn't be surprising. It does take a month for the moon to orbit us. Anybody coming from a lunar calendar home country? Who's that? Kind of Asian students, lunar calendar? Yeah, lunar calendar? Not lunar calendar? No. Not lunar calendar. Gregorian, Gregorian calendar. Yeah. Uh, so you, yeah, you know, you know this. Okay, is that okay? Yeah. So look, what we'll do is I'll let you try these for a few minutes, and then we'll start the next lesson. We'll we'll at least start the next lesson, Kepler, I think, which is quite nice because it's the last topic in fields. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So we're doing fine. We're doing fine. Um. Yeah. So how many questions do you have there now?